Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 89 of the Showbound Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Raskin, here in person in Barrie with Ethan Cardwell. As always, Cards, how's it going, bud? No, it's great. It feels great to be in person. Uh, I was talking to you earlier. It feels like we're on the set of Tim and Sid, but a little different uh, setting, I guess you could say, or something like like that. But, uh, you know, we're legit. We look like news anchors. We got our papers here. We got it all set up. We're ready to go for this episode. So it should be a good one. We got a couple special guests coming on. Um, I mean, we might as well just yeah, kind drop of them. drop them now. We got my line mate, um, best centerman in the league, Evan Veerling, coming on. Barry Colts, uh, number 41, and a former draft pick of the New York Rangers. Yeah, and then we also got Justin Noble from the, the Gavin Wall Specialist, who if you listen to the podcast, we all know he's also an OHL linesman. So we hear about stuff like that, but we'll get to both those interviews in a bit. Um, but it's exciting, man. It's we were, we were kind of just talking about like, it's super cool to be in person. Finally, we're 89 episodes in we're here, we're getting it done. It, it just feels so natural and so nice. And we don't have to deal with cards, these Wi-Fi and stuff. Oh, like, yeah, <laughs> this is, this is beautiful. We like, we don't have to worry about Wi-Fi like at all period here. Just like, you know, we can just talk and I don't know. It's, it's definitely a lot easier. We are just saying how much easier it's going to be on everyone. It's going to be easier on you editing too, because you're oh, going to yeah. deal with no lag this episode and everything like that. So hopefully this episode goes well um two guests no main guest this week two special appearances um let's get into it yeah well so we're in barry why am i in barry i guess yeah. um we just finished speaking with the barry colts we as in the gavin group um talking to you guys about finance and what it's like to be the, the life of an nhl player on the financial side so like how was that for you guys as the, as the players and stuff now you know a little bit more from your interactions with gavin but basically we we ran the boys through like you can pick your salary, pick the team you play for, and then all the expenses and, you know, things like taxes, agent fees, whatever, go through all the thing. Next thing you know, guys are coming home with no money. So like, how, how was that stuff for you guys? Yeah. Like, I think, like you said, I know a little bit about it, obviously with my experiences with the Gavin group before and stuff like that. Uh, um, but I think for a lot of the guys, it was pretty eye opening. Um, a lot of people who are listening to this will also think it's eye opening. Like you have a million dollar contract and you're, walking away with $330,000 at the end of the year. And you're like, how did that happen? But it's just life. You got to pay for things. You got to, you got to pay to live these days. And it's a, it's real expensive and everyone thinks you're a millionaire, but uh, the reality is um, you got to save that money wisely or it's going to go quick. So I think it was like a really good lesson for a lot of the guys, including myself. And it just like, it's not only in business, like you're not going to use these uh, life lessons in in hockey. Sorry. Yeah. But in business, uh, wherever profession you may go into, you got to learn how to manage your money and save it properly and invest it properly. So, uh, so it lasts for a long time and you can have the life that you want to live rather than yeah. the one that you're kind of clawing at, you know? And San Jose, for those who don't know where cards he's drafted is among, it might actually be, but it's among the most expensive places to live and play in the NHL. So you're going to need to be careful with the, that money, but uh, um, we, let's get into some stuff. So I wanted to, as you see, I noted down in writing there, uh, this thing I just bought myself, like my own little gift for myself around the holiday time. It's a, a breakfast sandwich maker. So here's a picture. No for you way. Guys. I'm going to show a picture to the YouTube viewers here. If you're, if you're watching. So basically, so I have one of these things every day. It's essentially like an egg McMuffin maker for those who aren't um, looking or like listening. You're listening on the audio. I'll try to describe it. But so it, it makes two at the same time. Basically, you throw in your... Uh, your egg McMuffin, the bottom half, throw on like cheese, bacon, whatever you want, breakfast, sausage, like anything. And then there's a, like a little pan, I guess you could describe it. That's one egg size that goes over that. You crack your egg on the pan and you put your top half of the, uh, whatever English muffin and you just close it and it sets a timer and it cooks it. And then you can just pull out like the lever. It drops the top half, like the egg and stuff right onto the sandwich. So you can just take the sandwich right out and eat it. You're not like scooping the egg out and putting on it. Where like, did you, you find out it. about this? So I saw it on TikTok and I make these things every day and I, I knew I needed this thing. It's so well, yeah, simple. Yeah, the egg sometimes a pain in the ass because you get it wrong shape and stuff like that. Yeah. It's all dripping. And, and everything. then, and even I'm using two pots or like a pan, two pans. I, like I'm putting my eggs on one and then I'm cooking up some like turkey, turkey bacon yeah. on the other. This is one thing. And then it all pops out and it can go right in the dishwasher. That style. So, right? so you're like, you're like five minute mornings. You just throw that on, you start it oh, up, yeah, get in the shower so and then you're in yeah, and out. And it's on a timer there's, and there's so no it stops around. cooking when there's you're no done. Mess. You don't even need to keep an eye on it. Like, Actually, you know what I want to, like that, that's sick. 
that like that is a good investment, I think, especially if you're always a sandwich guy in the 50 morning. Bucks, by the way, it makes two. Of the yeah, that time. that's dialed in. Yeah. But uh, the air fryer, very underrated. Like it's obviously on the come up. Like everybody, I feel like has an air fryer now. So maybe it isn't underrated. But I just found out about how easy it is. Like man, I threw a salmon in there the other day. Eight minutes salmon, boom, done, ready to go. Unbelievable taste and everything like that. Even chicken, I did chicken in the air fryer. Do throw like if you want hash browns or just some fries, just toss them in there. Like four minutes, go do whatever I got to do. Boom, done. Making cooking so easy for all of the listeners who complain about cooking and all of our guests who no, can't cook. I know, like JT, I was talking to him the other day. He said automatic purchase as soon as he went to pro hockey was an air fryer. So uh, if you don't have one, definitely go look into it. Not an ad. I, I've never used one actually. No, yeah, I know you. Bro, at, you okay. have to. So get I one. know how sick they are, and everyone I know has one, and I've never even tried something made from one. Like I've never used no, it's one. Unreal. I've never. But I, I, and I see these. I'm on like the cooking side of TikTok, right? Yeah. So I see all these videos of like, do you, do you ever get those TikToks? By the way, where you watch someone like they're cutting up like close up. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's like, like the ASMR, but yeah, like yeah. When people are going like this on their thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I get a lot of those videos, but a lot of that stuff goes in the air fryer, and I want one, but. Man, my kitchen's kind of small, so I'm like, once yeah. I get my own place, that's really nice. Like, I'm, I'm gonna get one. But anyway, it's a hockey podcast. Yeah, we can let's move on. Let's talk about <laughs> tomorrow. So, I mean, let's talk about your weekend games first. Actually, we'll talk about uh, my weekend with your family before we even. Yeah, get yeah. So, so Cardsy comes to Niagara, where I'm living. As for those who don't know, uh, to play the Niagara Ice Dogs. So his parents and his brother come down, and his grandparents, and um, I get the call from my dad. Uh, it's like five o'clock the game's at seven i was going to the game anyway and uh my dad's like cards these parents are here at at the store where my the store my brother owns archives wine and, and spirit merchants 39 james street downtown st Catharines. uh showbound discount if you say you're coming from the showbound podcast anyway <laughs> so i show up over to archives sure enough your parents are there who i'd never met yet no. um and uh so your mom's already got the wine going oh of course she offers me a glass right away Actually, it's funny. This this goes into a whole other side story, which I'll get into in a minute. But anyway, your parents were great. I'd met your brother before. Yeah. Um, who would, sh- can we shout him out? You want to shout out your brother? Just- yeah, my brother just committed and signed his letter of intent to go play uh, Division One golf at uh, University of Robert Morris in uh, in Pennsylvania, Division One school. So shout out to him. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm not surprised that uh, you you stumbled into my my mom there. She's a wine connoisseur, so she knows her stuff about her wines and. Uh, she was super excited to go. Yeah. And and so, yeah, she bought a couple of bottles. And anyway, we opened up a, a nice bottle. I think it was a, a good little $50 bottle. So oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a good one from there. And, and and so I guess your dad's on a no drinking kick thing right now. Yeah. And, health kick. He wants to look good for okay. the summer. Yeah. So it was just, so your mom and I basically like split this bottle and I, I was making dinner when my dad called me. So I didn't end up eating. I like raced over. Yeah. So I've been on an empty stomach since breakfast and I split a bottle of wine with your mom and like pretty short time before I had to get to the rink so I had a little buzz going and I walked to the rink by the way it's right right by the rink yeah so. no drinking in yeah traffic. um so I like I walk over to the rink I had a good buzz going and I uh I had to it was like a promotional night with Meridian and some philanthropy they were doing so my job basically I had to walk uh the director of philanthropy down to where they do the Kojiko TV interviews in the first intermission yeah so I go in to introduce myself and I was like hey whatever like I'm gonna walk you over here and I was a little tipsy and she had her social media guy there and he's like complimenting me on my jacket, that jacket right there. Like I just got that. Yeah. It's dialed um, in. It was pretty nice. And I, I got it from RW and co. Yeah. And so the guy's like, I love that jacket when you get it. And I was like, I was like, just like, don't want to, I just want to be good. Like I'm a little tipsy from this wine. Yeah. I, I mixed up my letters and instead of saying RW and co, which is like a nice place, I said H&M. And yeah. Which is, it's still nice. No, so I, I just spent like 400 bucks on this jacket and, and the then guy he gave like, no credit in, for it in front of this, like, lady who's got a gucci purse and stuff and i'm like i just got the rw code or at h&m now i'm flipping it the wrong way <laughs> anyway and then i made the mistake of doubling down and the guy's like really that looks so nice i was like yeah h&m the like, best and now yeah i shop at h&m too but like oh give me some credit like I yeah just no, you code. did you did spend the money you should have got the at least the the credit for it but uh, but that was pretty funny, <laughs> that <is> funny. <laughs> and, and when i showed up you you were definitely still buzzing after the game well, I was buzzing because I was fired up that Cardsy had yeah, a hat trick. Yeah. That's what I was buzzing yeah. off of. So Cardsy gets a hat trick. Um, I'm sitting beside your the the goalie Sam Hildebrandt. Is that his name in the yeah. press box? Sorry, Sam. 
Um, and he was like, you got to come to every game. Like, <laughs> your cards, he's good luck charm. Like, all this. although not good enough luck because you guys did end up dropping the game. But um, it was cool seeing you get a hat trick yeah. in person. The second one I've seen you get in person. The first one was when I was here. It was yeah. against Hamilton. It was in the first period. Yeah, the four bowl night. So, uh, but yeah, man, I guess I just picked the right night to go out and do it. But And then after the game, your grandma called me handsome. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, must have been the jacket. Yeah, it must have been the H&M. Forty dollar jacket <laughs> that you got on the clearance rack. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that was a that was a good game, and I picked the right time. I had good good crew of people there, and uh, always loved playing in Niagara. So yeah, and then uh, also on the topic of your family, yesterday my dad ran into your mom. I know, I heard about yeah. this at the Owasco uh, and yeah. uh, in Oshawa or Whitby there, and I was there too, but I, I didn't see her. I was I I don't know where I was. I I probably left at that point. We took separate. So you cars. were you were in Oshawa. And now you're in Barrie today, and then you're going back to Niagara. So you are like a journeyman right yeah. now. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep, yep. So it's been it's been a lot of driving, but anyway. So that was funny, just randomly that they ran into each other. I know, there, so I weird. Anyway, you go on to Erie and you get the win. So and another goal in that yeah. game. So like, let's talk about that Erie game. Also talk about just like the trip, how you're playing. Like, let's hear from you about that stuff. Yeah, like I feel like I'm playing pretty decent. Um, obviously tough to drop the first one against Niagara, but um, yeah, we go on the next day. We drive to Erie and um got a good pregame meal in us freshy bowl so i was dialed in i was loving that and then uh yeah we get to we get to erie pretty early so we stop at a tim's and there was absolutely nothing so like this tim seemed like there was like a i don't know like the end of the world happened in erie pennsylvania so uh i was i was in there and i'm like okay like there's no options for food so literally like you know when you go in tim's and like there's donuts and stuff and like yeah uh, everything down the rack there was only like two options. It was chocolate glazed donuts and honey cruller, which I always get anyway. So I was kind of happy. But uh, I'm a big two... Boston cream guy. By the yeah, way. I love a good Boston cream. But I, I don't know before a game yeah, because like not. with the cream, like maybe a little unsettling. Maybe beers, he would go for it. Yeah, beers might. Beers <laughs> definitely would. But uh, we'll learn more about that in a bit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. And then we go to Erie. Another favorite rink of mine. I'm never playing another OHL game in that rink again. Unless we meet in the finals, I guess. But uh, an awesome rink, nonetheless. Got my first OHL goal there. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And the viral clip of that we posted of Cardi looking like a two-year-old yeah. holding his puck by the boards. Yeah, that so, was fun. You know what? You don't look like such a baby. Cardi's. No, man. I got this uh, greasy stash that I uh, sponsored by Just for Men. But uh, yeah, you've grown, you've grown into your face. Yeah, a little bit better. And when I met Cardi, like you still had the baby face. Oh yeah, for and, sure. Uh, I pro- like COVID probably is when I started to like not, not be such a baby. No, face. you you got he's grizzled. He's a overager. He's got the facial hair. He's got like a scar under your eye. Like. Oh yeah, <laughs> just a war torn guy. Yeah, <laughs> look at you. But yeah, no, the game went well. Uh, like you said, we got the win, and I was fortunate enough to score a goal. So couldn't couldn't be happier leaving Erie, Pennsylvania, and arriving back here at the beautiful Sadlon Arena at three in the morning um and then yeah nice off day sunday because what else are you gonna do but yeah. watch football when you get in that late before we finish that weekend i just want to shout out when i was in niagara and cards at the same time we got a ton of showbound fans that came to us and which is cool for me some people want to take pictures with me even without you in them actually which is pretty good cool. of a show so uh that never happened so so that's always cool yeah, and nice. uh but it was good it was good being with cards and getting some love for for that but uh I mean, we can, uh, I guess, move forward. What about just the trip? You get, you know, overnight. Short, or, man. Yeah. You know, it was only like a day trip because we went down, like we drove down. What we did, actually, which I thought was pretty cool. Like, we, we don't normally do this. So, we went down to Niagara early before the game, checked into the hotel, like went out for a team meal, had a nap, and then went to the rink for the game, which I thought was awesome. That's like, the way to do it. Yeah, like you're you're so and, dialed and in on the it game. It doesn't cost more from a team. Like, that's why no. I don't. Other than like maybe the one meal, but you mm-hmm. you want that for your yeah, guys. For sure. I thought it was amazing. Like I think it's like definitely something I want to do like every road trip now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was awesome. You go in there with like a clear cut purpose. Okay, like I'm here, I'm gonna have my nap, and then like I'm going to the rink, like it's a home game. I'm not traveling right off a bus there. So yeah. bus legs shouldn't be a thing and everything like that. Who are you rooming with on the road? It switches all the time. Like oh, yeah. sometimes I'm with Declan McDonald. Last trip I was with Ronick Jodwen. So um yeah, we have some fun on the road. Whoever my roommate is, try to uh, have some comic relief, whether it's a, a win or a loss, uh, and enjoy our time. Okay, nice. Um, we, with Brock, only had the one game last week. We played T 
TMU, which is formerly Ryerson, and we actually lost. And these guys, like, it's always a bloodbath, I swear to God. And we're, like, two of the top teams. So, you know, both teams are kind of getting up for it. And uh, it was, like, so I, I called it, like, you can see in the notes here, like, I called it, like, a sell-off because what our guy scores, like, does one of the things that like, goes by their bench. And he's like, woo! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then they go come by our bench. Too, and it was, like, oh, back yeah. and forth. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, like, guys are just getting in each other's grills. And then things are getting out of hand. There was, like, four, like, big line type scrum sort of things that happened, including, like, one, there's, like, 20 seconds left in the game. One of their guys takes a liberty and, like, I don't know, but the funny one, so we posted this clip, the team on TikTok of our guy, uh, Tyler Bernie, hitting. We posted this? Bowlers. Or you posted we, this? I got guys for this now. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so. I got guys, he says. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have an army of sport management students at Brock that are dying to volunteer. Yeah. yeah um, sure. And uh, anyway, it's Bernie crushing bowlers and a good hard clean Yeah, hit. it was a good hit. Good, good hard hit. And, and yeah, there was no penalty on it, but. Um, there was a penalty after for the roughing that, that ensued, but <laughs> but Bowler's comments on the TikTok, he goes that hurt, and I yeah. thought it was so funny. And and you know, Bowler's, I don't know him. I I just like apparently he's like a hilarious beauty. Like that's what my our equipment manager was there. Equipment manager last year, he's like Bowler's is an awesome guy, and I was like, I hate this guy. I don't know anything about him, but yeah, he always he lights us he up. Puts up three, yeah, four <laughs> points a night. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, he's he's hilarious, man, and like that's so him, like. That like really not care about like the hit or the game, but just like make some light of it, make a joke out of it. That guy's always joking around. So yeah, he sounds like a funny guy, honestly. But for I mean, now, I hate him because he's always like he got another two points on us. The guy's like twenty three points in like twelve games right now. Yeah, he's making it look like very easy. Yeah, but, but we got a we have a three game weekend coming up. So do you guys have right? the break though, right? Oh yeah, because your so, break's way earlier. So for those who don't know, in university hockey, December is the end of the semester. So you have, the players have exams. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's swamped with school stuff. So the league actually takes a pause for the month of December. Now we have for this, we have December 1st, 2nd, 4th, whatever, like the first week we have yeah. three games here. But then as you get into exams, it's a full shutdown. We're still practicing every day yeah. until like um, the guys will get like a bit of time off, but uh, no games. So we got, we got a month off and uh, it's a good chance for the guys to like do their exams and not have to worry about. You have a good reset. Yeah. Mental reset. And then you go for the second half and, you know, starting early January. So that's coming up. And then uh, maybe I'll get out to some more old yeah, more time on your and, hands uh, at that point. It'll be fun. When do you guys come to Niagara next year? Like Hamilton? I don't know. I think we go to uh, Niagara three more times this year. So yeah. we could be there um, probably early in the new year because I don't think we play them before the Christmas break. But we do have a three-game road trip this weekend with Owen Sound, Windsor, then Sarnia. Yeah. So, well, Owen Sound at home on Thursday, and then we go on the road Saturday, Sunday, Windsor, Sarnia. So yeah. that should be a good trip, though, and three really good teams that we're going to play. So, um, yeah. It's got to feel like it's getting pretty pro right now with the like the hotel trips week after week now and like yeah. that sort of thing, another one coming up. So, and, Well, it's getting back to normal, right? Because, like, last year we didn't play it. Like, we didn't go in any hotels and stuff, and it's kind of yeah. a bummer. Like, it's always good to have, like, team camaraderie, team meals, go out with the boys, like – in the hotel rooms and stuff like that. So all that adds up like at the end of the year and stuff too. So I think getting back on that schedule and for us, we've had like a college schedule to start the year. We've only had like two games a week. So this week to have three and four nights and kind of get into a swing, like starting on Thursday, we have 10 games in 18 days before the break. So it's going to be a whirlwind schedule for us. Like not much practicing, kind of just staying on top of everything, like taking care of your body. And I mean, with taking care of your body said, um, I think we're going to send it in our Manscaped ad that I'm going to attempt. Yeah, Carsey's going after this. Live on air. This is going to test good. My, my skills. All right, so this is a first take. This is one effort only, and we're going right into it. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts, whether it's for friends or the friends. You're good. <sighs> Second take. <laughs> okay, this is my second take. I did screw up the Just first. Just continue time. from where you went. They don't care. No, well, you're gonna cut this. No, you're good. You're gonna cut that. Now I have to. But you, you would be good to fumble a word and keep going. All right. Well, then let's all let's Just leave it. Let's leave first... it all in then. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's go. All right. It's take two. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts, whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants. You can make this season to be jolly with Manscaped. 
Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid, avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top-of-the-line shower products to have all the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and using code SHOWBOUND for free shipping and 20% off. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything you need to help you deck the halls from face to balls just in time for the mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each product from the best-selling performance package plus ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo plus conditioner, and ultra premium deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. The Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer features a proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate presence. Plus, both are waterproof, so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway. <laughs> There's also a 400, nope. 4,000 K nope. LED. That's a, it's an extra zero there that I missed LED light on it. So you can light the way for Rudolph. Now that you've groomed the candy cane, it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the platinum packages, shower products. All of Manscaped shower gear is sulfate free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling good doesn't stop at the shower. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve stank problems all day long. Once they touch your sack, they'll never, you'll never go back. <laughs> the Platinum Package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than that old loofah as we know rask uses um, Only manscaped. yeah get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code showbound at manscaped.com that is 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com use the code showbound manscaped get your jingle balls ready for the holidays all right that was well done and uh the only thing is the speed of it but Fast or slow? I, I thought it was slow. Yeah, but... because I was just making sure, like, I, I like if, if they're going to hire me to, well, I was gonna to say, do this stuff, like, I want to make yeah. sure the point gets across. You, you got it. And uh, the, the thing is, though, like, people are going to enjoy that. Yeah. Like, they're going to, that's the type of ad, especially with you reading it, they're not, they're not going to want to skip it. No. Like, you nailed that. No, we're not, we're not skipping it. A lot any of people have been running. using our code, like, for, like, people are asking me, like, oh, what's the code again? What's the code? Like, my girlfriend wants to get me this. Yeah, like it's a sick gift for the holidays. Showbound promo code once again. Anyway, we can move on. We got some stuff to talk about, and then we'll flip it to an interview. Actually, you know what? I think we should flip to Evan Beerling now. Yeah, and we'll come back. We got a lot more, so let's send it to New York. Former New York Rangers draft pick Evan Beerling. All right, we're pleased to be joined now by the best centerman in the league, my centerman, number forty-one at the Barry Colts, Evan Beerling, a uh, New York Rangers prospect. So we're happy to have you on, Beers. Thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, so I guess we can start with beers. Like, um, well, we we've met back when I was in Barry years ago, and we kind of were all in Barry at the same time. But uh, we just talked with the Gavin guys, and uh, it's past five o'clock now. We're still at the ring, so I'm just curious. Like, what what are the days like for you now this season? Like, what's a what's a typical day looking like for you on a I practice think, day? I think it's just um, you know we go to the gym. At, I think my group starts at like nine fifty. Um, and then practice or skill starts at around 11 ish, and then uh, we're gone. You know, we're getting out here by two or two or three. I think. So, um, some days are longer than others, but we get enough off days, I think. So, yeah, keeping it pretty light and stuff. But, uh, I mean, I, I obviously know how your season's going because I'm going along it with you. But, uh, for all the listeners out there, you want to kind of just explain, like, explain how personally your season's been this year? Yeah, it's been a lot better. Um, probably the best season of my career, you know, so far. Um, just kind of got myself in better shape and they were able to play at a, a higher pace and kind of keep it with you now. So. <laughs> I don't know about that. You're always pushing pace out there, but what did you do differently this off season to kind of prepare for this overage season? I think just my eating, eating and working out with just the two things. Yeah. What about like now you're getting OA pay? We kind of, Karzina, we were talking about this before. Like 
are you, you are you spending your money on stuff like are you ripping park place across the street or whatever getting meals every oh, day? Man, i think uh the weather taking all my money on the back of the bus uh his oh, cards yeah. are taking their money yeah i know he's been getting rinsed in cards lately oh, yeah. at the back of the bus what are you guys uh, playing uh, we'll, we'll play blackjack or like okay. just like like against each other 1v1 or oh, a yeah. few guys or or you play like poker or something like that just some light stuff have some fun okay. but uh Pierce definitely made a few donations to the boys. Yeah. yeah. So how about um going on to like another level? We said you're you're dropped by the New York Rangers. Are you still a Rangers prospect? No, so they didn't sign they had told June of last year to, to sign me. So I'm a free agent on Columbus. Okay. So what how is it going this year? Like are you are you talking to teams? Are you like what's where are you at for your plans for the future? I think just gotta keep going. Um I'm not too sure. I just gotta keep going and hopefully it's on the ball in the place. But well, you're playing well this year. How do you? What's it like playing on a line with Cardi? Oh, be be dead honest too. Like, is he pissing you off and stuff? Like, well, just tell me what it's like being with Cardi every day right now. No, I don't. I think we, we hold each other accountable for the most part. Yeah. Um, if one of us isn't going, it's kind of like okay. We gotta. Yeah. 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 Like, there's some shifts where we come off. Like, actually, like some periods we come off, and I'm I'm like looking at beers. I'm like, ah, like that wasn't very good. Like that's not good enough for us. Like, why did we just waste a period? Like, you know, so it's actually become pretty good. And like, we, we kind of, like he said, like if we have a bad start to the game, we come into the room and like, we're like, Hey, like we got to dial it in here and like bring something in the second period, but it's been good in that sense. What about like challenges this year? I mean, I mean, it's no secret. There's four overagers. You can only play three. Like what are some challenges you're, you're being faced with and like how you're, we, we actually get a lot of questions about like how people handle adversity. So what are some challenges, challenges and how are you handling them? Yeah, I think just um, you kind of just cut a block of the noise. Um, you know, with the four of us, we know that one of us is going to get scratched. Um, but then again, there's been injuries and stuff like that, and guys that have been sick. So um, just blocking up the noise, you know, and just kind of focusing on what you have to do. Yeah. And I want to throw it back to draft day because everyone loves a good draft story. So you want to talk about quickly where – where you were, like what you did with your family and stuff. Obviously, it was a COVID draft, but uh, how that day went down for you? Yeah, I think so. I was with my my whole family, um, and then uh, as the rounds went on, I was kind of getting more nervous, and nervous, and <laughs> not really thinking I was going to get picks. And then I kind of stopped watching, and then uh, my name kind of came up on the TV as I as I walked out, and then um, my sister kind of freaked out. Obviously, the best thing in my life. Oh, I also want to throw in. We'll go back to draft, but your sister's dating a guy who plays summer hockey, man. So yeah, yeah, uh, David. David yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was funny when I saw him throw the Insta post up. I was like, no way. That's <laughs> but yeah, but what about like uh, we always kind of ask, did you have a lot of contact with the Rangers and stuff? Like, did you have those meetings, or did you expect them maybe to maybe take a chance on you? Yeah, I think there was maybe five or six teams that I was thinking, and then um, like a week before the Rangers had like a a really in depth. Um, conversation that was good. nice and then what about like getting to new york like maybe one of the sickest places to be live play and whatever like what was that like for you the first so, time you got there the year after i was drafted i lived there for the full summer so i was there from like, july all the way till like september it's sick. and uh just like the traffic there's so many people there. Yeah. yeah the traffic is just like i lived probably 20 minutes away but it would take like an hour to get into the city. That's wild. How would you get around? You had you bring your own car? The belts I live with had. That's, that's pretty cool. Was, that's pretty cool. Right. They had a good setup. Like it wasn't like a regular. Like you got billets and everything. Like I've never heard of that with any other yeah. team. That's pretty nasty. Yeah. They would call it like a hosting family. So you get like your dinners and stuff made for you and all that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. wow. Yes. Imagine live like that in the NHL. We talk so many times about guys who can't cook. Oh, yeah. like imagine how many guys would die to live with like some of the parents oh, <laughs> they'd absolutely love it imagine like playing in your hometown like we did the gavin seminar today and guys were like oh yeah i was playing in toronto try to live at home and stuff like that saves some money too yeah but that's pretty dialed i want to throw it back to obviously a lot of people may not or may know this who's listening today but beers was the second overall pick to the ohl of the flint firebirds at the time so do you want to talk about that like your minor midget year, obviously you lit it up. I had the pleasure of getting dominated by you and Q quite a bit. So, yeah, obviously I think just playing with Q and um, just growing up, I, I started off playing double A and then um, I finally made the team in the UP league and then um, just continued to get better. And then my minor midget year, I started off pretty slow. 
and then uh, playoffs came in and OHL caught by did a lot better than that. Yeah, you lit it up. Didn't you get like four goals in one game in the OHL <laughs> Cup? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Did you guys win the OHL Cup or not? I lost in the Senate. Uh, Who'd you lose to? Hawkins. Oh, yeah, Vaughn, and then they lost in the finals to JRC. But the draft day, like, were you expect? did you know you were going to before the draft? I knew, like, a week before, but I was going to play, too. So were you, like, were you ever, like, doubting, like, oh, maybe it's Flint and stuff like that, or were you, like, all in right away? Well, at the beginning, it was just no American teams just because schooling and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it's kind of hard turning down the second world, so. Yeah. Uh, I ended up doing it. Yeah, and Flint's actually, like, a lot of people don't give it the credit it deserves. Like, it's yeah. a good spot to play and everything like that. But yeah, the junior players really well. So. Yeah. That's so what about what about just overall time in Barrie, living in Barrie? What do you like about Barrie? Well, he, he gets to live at home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's definitely my favorite. So place. you're from, he's living from at home. here? Yeah. Oh, my I'm God. I'm at, uh, like, East Mulberry, Newmarket. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's sick. So this guy's living in the billet, home-cooked meal life, no matter where he is. Like, yeah, for free. Yeah. And it's like what he's used to too. Like obviously the billet experience is good and all, but yeah, I know that billet's like on game days. So like oh yeah. Thursday night I'm playing. I'll stay at uh have my billets and then they make some stuff and stuff. But do the billets are they asking you to like, come over, we miss you like that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> You'd be a good billet son, I bet. Yeah, if you're just a good guy, yeah. keeps the light always. So yeah. Always what about we can throw it into like some what we think would be fan questions. Yeah, we yeah. didn't ask for any because it's kind of a surprise interview here but first one everyone's always asking what stick do you use and what specs i use the bauer uh, hyper light and it's just like a, a gray light customized stick and then 82 flex p28 curve okay and it's working for you this year pretty good i might have to switch, switch up. <laughs> yeah you might want to test some of those actually i started using a, a p28 at practice and stuff i use a p92 because i was always like a defenseman i wasn't really shooting too much yeah and when i switched curves like it's Totally different. Like my oh, yeah, shot, exactly. like I can't. Sometimes I can't raise the puck. Then when I switch back, it's like now I'm firing rockets. And yeah. then, it, but the P twenty eight, I'm like launching them head high over the net. That's why beers only goes bunk, but yeah, <laughs> bunk only. Um, it's hard to switch curves. Like, what do you use again? I use P ninety. I use pretty small curve compared. Like yeah. the P twenty eight is definitely a you little like, bit bigger. Use a bigger so. blade. I use a thicker blade, so yeah, that helps on like the odd face off that I take when you're struggling and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. uh, so awesome. let's go with. Uh, Free game meal. Changes. That's Tim awesome. Hortons. Tim, Tim. The what is the turkey bacon ranch wrap from Tim Hortons? Oh yeah. Yeah, Real beer spirit. I always show up to the boss and like I'll have like a meal or something. I big beers. You got free game meal. He goes, ah, Timmy's today. Guy guy crushes a little sub from Tim Hortons and goes out and gets four points or something like that. I'm like, well, how did that just happen? Uh, well, okay, funny story. I mean, when I was living here, I was playing in the GMHL up in Muskoka. Oh. And I would, I would like go after work to games. Yeah. Um. So I'd be here till whatever five. Like I'm, the game at seven. Like I'm getting there at six. And uh, obviously it's not the OHL, but I'd be ripping Tim's. I would grab that that wrap from Tim's. I'd say no tomato, but they always screw it up and give you tomato. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. But um, I would eat that like in the locker room, and I would take it onto the bench during warm up. Warm up. Like it's a what? different league, right? It's, it's a different. <laughs> so I I'd, I'd be sitting there and I'd be mucking those things and. I was point for game defenseman in that league. So the rap works. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of uh, invented it. I mean, like as far as I know, I guess you were doing it beforehand, but uh, that'll be something he's got to take to pro next year. Yeah, man. That, they they probably would get mad at, at that in pro though, right? You think? Well, I mean, if he's getting four points a night, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all preference and stuff, but I, I just feel like it, I think optically it looks bad. Is that fair to say? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, who cares? Like you're, you're. I think it depends. You're buzzing. Yeah. It's, it's his fifth year in the in the league. Yeah. NHL drafted you're players. You're making nine hundred a month. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's like, making the big cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other uh, like fan type questions we would have? Maybe. Uh, okay. Actually, you've been in the league a long time. What's your favorite and least favorite road ring? Favorite's got to be London the Kitch. Yeah. And then least, some break. So yeah, yeah. yeah, man, that's mine. I always say that too. That's pretty fair. Comes around a Wednesday night or something. <laughs> oh, it's criminal. You go up there. It's a three-hour bus day trip and everything like that. Um, I got one here. What if you could pick any team in the NHL to sign with this year as a free agent? Who would it be? I think uh, more warm. 
like LA or something. All yeah, right. Yeah. So if the Kings are listening to this, broadcast, yeah, they, I, I thought you'd say San Jose stick with cards. Either way, you're paying the high, like among the highest tax rate, we, as we just learned. Yeah, so, here's the high roller, though. He doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, any anything else we got here? No, I think that's good. I know Beer's got a little bit of traffic on the way home, so we can get him out yeah. here, get him on the road. All right. Good yeah. seeing you again. Happy to have you on. Yeah, good luck. Great. I'm sure I'll see you around. Sure. So, yeah. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks to Beersy for that one. Uh, pretty cool catching up with him. Hadn't seen him in a while, but obviously glad to see he's doing well. And it was it was cool to have an in-person interview as well. It, it flows super freely. What do you think? Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, obviously my line mate, so I talk to him a lot. So a lot of stuff that I haven't heard before there. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I've heard <laughs> it all before, but uh, glad that we could uh, get his story a little bit across to you guys. And we'll pick it up now with some FIFA World Cup stuff. And I know you got some hot takes on the coaching side. So, yeah, I, I got in this huge argument with with my brother about it and some guys on the Brock team. We've been some some have agreed with me and some haven't. So th- here's my take on coaching. And it's it's soccer related, not just necessarily World Cup. Um, now, to preface everything, I don't know anything about soccer. I'm OK. Let me guess what you're going to say. Are you going to say, like, why are they just passing the ball around and well, go try to score? Okay, I'm not I'm not questioning the methods necessarily, but I, I'm. Here, I'll just get right into it. Soccer fans, don't come at me. I'm admitting that I don't know. This is just coming from a guy who knows hockey. So if I coached a team, give me any team in the World Cup, for example, and put, put them in a game against another team. If I coach them in what I would think like a hockey type strategy, which is push the pace. So the ball moves forward and we go. it ends with a shot on goal or a cross. Like we're not sending the ball Or a back. turnover. Exactly. It could be a turnover. But my strategy would be send it forward, cross Let's it, go. shoot it. I want like 20 shot attempts per half. Yeah. Like I want the ball ending the possession ending with a shot or, or you turn it over trying. Yeah. So that's the way I like, could I win it? This has been the argument with everybody. Could I win a game? If you give me a team in the FIFA world cup, you need ed- endurance. These guys are playing 90 minutes, right? So if they're running up and down, I think slowing the pace down at some points, but I get so mad watching it because like you, I want to see shots. Yeah. Like the net is massive. When they're the by the box, so just shoot it. Yeah. You know, like I, I think there needs to be more shots. I saw the one corner kick. It's it, the plays in the box a little bit. It gets out of the box. Next thing you know, they're sending it back to the goalie. I was like, you were right there. Like it took so long to get there. You know what we should do? If this, we should post this clip on, t- on TikTok. And if, if it gets 100,000 likes on TikTok, you and I have to coach a Little League soccer team next summer. <laughs> and I guess it's out there now, so we're posting this, and uh, yeah, that might end up happening, and I think we're going to win the championship with that, yeah, that so. method, so we'll see. Now, I want to show you, I saw a funny tweet about soccer today. I'll read it. So, this guy goes, how to fix soccer. One, the field is huge. Shrink it. Two, too many players on the field. Limit to three forwards, two defenders, and a goalie. Three, Players should get to come in and out whenever they want. Don't stop the game. Four, shrink the goal. Five, ice everywhere. <laughs> but, hey, and six, stop faking injuries. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a whole other thing. I, I, I actually like, I don't, so I don't know. Uh, I don't want to comment on, on it, but there, the one I want to say, I won't say who, but I'm watching one of the World Cup games. This guy like steps on the back of a guy's leg. The guy who got stepped on goes down. But the guy who steps on the guy also goes down. And he's like, he's like flopping around like, I don't understand. Like, you, if you're gonna step on the guy, you might as well just like keep running and pretend it never happened. Like, now you just drew even more attention to yourself. Yeah, but I, uh, I've seen some very questionable injuries. You could call them, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then they come out, they get that spray on them, and then they're magically good to go. So it's yeah. an interesting thing for sure if you're a soccer player. Um, and if we have any soccer player listeners, uh, DM us and let us know what you think. Yeah, let me know. Anyone DM me. Like, I, I'll argue with anybody about this coaching thing. Like, so someone come at me. Or tell me you agree. Anyway, let's get some NHL stuff in. So a um, couple, couple things on the NHL. I, I put down, do we want to change our Stanley Cup predictions now? We both said Colorado, but now we're, you know, a little bit. We're almost December into the season. Yeah. Do what? What's your pick on who's winning the Cup now with what we know? Okay, well, you put me on the spot here. So you, you've obviously thought of this. So I'll let you go first. I, I haven't actually thought too much. Um it's hard for me to switch from Colorado just because you know they're gonna. I got one. I got one. I got one. Okay, go ahead. the Bruins. Oh We're yeah, Bruins. And I, I like I, I, I see Spit and Chicklets on uh, like our biggest rival. On, yeah, we're uh, right up with them on um, 
what do you call it, t- Twitter all the time, and they were saying like maybe Patty Kane to the Bruins too. So, well, yeah, they're you know they're going to be loading up with the way they've started this yeah, season. Yeah, so. eighteen and three, I think it is. It's absolutely incredible. No OT loss, and they have like that Bruins, experience. So. Like they've all won cups. Like I don't know, it could very well happen. So that that's not a bad pick, I think. Dude, trying to repeat as Cardi misses the long range shot to the garbage. Um, <laughs> trying to repeat is going to be very hard. Like. It's not that easy just because Tampa just did it, right? So no, exactly. I don't know if, if Colorado can do it. But uh, I think for now, I, I'm going to keep my prediction with Colorado. Um, but, I like it. But that Boston pick is good, man. The, the Leafs might actually squeak into and win it. So we can't forget about that. Also, they're, they're <laughs> buzzing. The they, are, they are buzzing. Okay, that's what I – later on, I was going to say, we don't need to talk about the Leafs too much, but Marner's buzzing, 17-game point streak. That's good. The that's Leafs are good. buzzing. They're like – they're fourth in the entire NHL right now. Yeah. Well, um, this is also another thing. Media. I was talking about this with my billets yesterday. Like, they were getting lit up. Like, lit up at the start of the year. Now they're fourth in the NHL a quarter of the way through the season. It's like, okay, we just relax know, a little man. bit. Just chill. Like, these guys, every night, they're going out there. Obviously, they're trying to win. They have enough talent that it's going to figure itself out. Like, it's not the end of the world because they lose three in a row. And they're know? way down the depth chart. Like, every defenseman's injured pretty much. The goalie's, goalie's been out for a yeah. while. So, it's like. They're they're finding a way and get the adversity out of the way early. But yeah, people panic. Like people are jumping ship already. Like yeah. people are chirping me and stuff. Like <laughs> I don't. Anyway, so let's go Leafs. We're buzzing. Connor Bedard, fifty three points in twenty two goals in twenty four games this year in WHL. So that's over two points per game with basically a goal per game. And the guy's like seventeen or eighteen. Yeah, seventeen. I think. Like what the hell? This guy is so good. So I just wanted to bring that one to light. He's ridiculous, man. And I've been seeing some of the highlights that he's pulling off. Like the goals are just absurd. Yeah. And and obviously the WHL isn't quite as good as the OHL, but um, <laughs> but obviously like CHL, like all three are great leagues. So I know the kind of caliber that he's playing at. And to put up these numbers is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it's like leaving me speechless right now to like look at this stat line and like not give this guy like the credit he deserves. But we also need to talk about like how deep this draft is that these top four players in the draft, like Fantilli is absolutely tearing up university hockey. Yeah. As we've alluded to him many times, he's playing against men and he's making it look silly. He's, I think he's going to, if I had to guess, then you have Mitchkov yeah. over in Russia, who's Which on big contract for one or two still. Right. Like he's on contract till 25, 26. Like, does he go to, does he go four? Like, where does he go because of this? Like, I think Bedard's number one, no matter what. I would think so. Just because, like, I, I think if Mitchkov wasn't on contract, maybe it would be a different story. But now we have Fantilli playing this well, too. So it makes it a toss up two through four. And there's also a guy from Sweden, last name Carlson, I believe, who's, who's absolutely a sick player, too. So. That'll be an interesting draft yeah. watch, and it, it has a lot of hype around this draft. Yeah, it's going to be a good draft, man. And and I saw an article today about, like, some someone was saying how a couple first overall picks are not busts, but, like, people are, like, first overall picks aren't what they used to be. You had, basically, you had the McDavid and the Matthews draft back-to-back, and then I guess the first overall picks didn't jump in and become superstars right away, so people well, are, like, freaking out. Look at look at the <laughs> second overall picks in those drafts, too. You have, who do you have, Line A, yeah. and you have Eichel. Like yeah. also superstars so who couple made immediate really good impact. Draft. This and, year's gonna and be that's like what that. we could see this year. Yeah. yeah. So you have to look up for that. But like also people like jump to Cooper. And Marner so went early. third in one or fourth. fourth Marner fourth, went fourth, fourth in that McDavid draft, I believe. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But then you also have the the guys who who are late bloomers, like not late bloomers, but just need that time to develop. Like yeah. look at Jack Hughes, oh, the guy's yeah. incredible now, and he has unreal interviews. Have you seen a few of them lately? Yeah, but one of them came off to me as like kind of rude. You see the one where he like walked off in the intermission one, like yeah, he normally, didn't say okay. it. yeah, that was weird. Is, normally guys finish saying thank you. Now I know I, I get the other side of it where you it's like, why are you thanking them? Like I, I could see that, but it's just been like uh you're you're used to seeing a guy be like thank you and they walk by. He's just like the guy's in the middle of talking. He just left. And the guy kind of gave him like a double take too. And he yeah, he's like, like oh, okay. But so I, and I know like I I don't know if they were winning or losing. They 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 must have been losing at that point. I don't know. I I, I I thought some of the stuff he's been doing is hilarious though. When he goes, they ask but, him. You like, know, about I him. I like seeing that personality. Like I yeah. I love like he can. I I kind of like when guys are giving it to people. Like if they ask a bad question, like the one where obviously he was like not. A, 
12 game heater or whatever. Like, what like, do you think? Yeah. So like, it's honesty. Like you're not going to give, like, I do like to see that in the game where they do yeah. give those honest answers. And it's like, okay, it's, it's good entertainment at the end of yeah. the day. And why pretend to be someone you're not like, you might yeah. as well just be honest and, and, if, and people are going to like you for who you are. So it's like yeah. pretty funny. Um, One more thing on the NHL. We got Shane Wright as we record this on Tuesday night, four goals in three games so far in the AHL as he's been sent down. We, a few episodes ago, we talked about how his situation should be handled. He's doing well in the A. He's over a goal per game at the, at the beginning. Like, yeah. So I think he belongs in the NHL right now. I think what ha- what's going to happen here is he's going to play in the A. I think, obviously, he's going to go to World Juniors. I do think Seattle's yeah. going to send him. Like, there's no reason they shouldn't. And then it's whether or not they're going to give him that another crack in the NHL afterwards um, or just send him back to junior. So, I think maybe he gets a – I don't know how long his conditioning stint can last. I think only two weeks. Five, yeah. Five games or two weeks. So he's already at three. I don't know when Canada's going to announce their lineup and stuff like that. So very interested to see will they give him another shot in the NHL or do they send him back? What's your take? I think I, – I would bring him up. Like if he's already this good in the A, I don't think he's developing in – the O and I get what people say like he's not going to develop in the NHL if he's not playing but it but... goes to show though like he hasn't played at all really yeah. and he's still that game ready when he goes down to the AHL yeah. and the AHL is definitely a lot harder than the OHL yeah. as we know I, I think he's going to be back in the NHL and they're going to just have to find a way to put him on like the, at least the third line at least yeah give him a shot yeah so I think that that's what I see going for you yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. Like, I honestly don't know what they're thinking. Obviously, it's a tough decision, but like we just alluded to, like four goals in three games is incredible in any league, let alone the AHL, which is not like a high scoring league as well. Like, it's hard to score goals in that league. Like every night, every guy's given it all they got. So to to do that at such a young age just shows his maturity in the game and stuff like that. But yeah, I guess we can send her to the this or that questions before we kind of wrap it up when we both go on our way. Yeah, we'll do some this or that. We're going to send it over to Justin Noble from Gavin, and then we're going to take some fan questions at the end. So stick around to hear some fan questions. Okay, this or that. How do you want to do it? You want to just uh, – I read them and we both answer. You want to do that? Cards, he's eating and thinking. I'm enjoying a nice piece of double bubble. Um, <laughs> courtesy of Barry Colts locker room. Um, I'll do one, then you do one. All right. Are we both answering, though, or no? Yeah. French fries or onion rings? Onion rings. French fries. Okay. Ethereum or Bitcoin? Ethereum. Yeah, Ethereum. Although neither. Yeah, neither. <laughs> yeah. Now it's you. Oh, that's right. Peanut butter or Nutella? Nutella all day. Peanut butter with Nutella. A little bit. Because I feel like I'm not being healthy if I'm having oh, Nutella. Oh, that's such a cardsy answer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I mean, I guess it's kind of fair. Yeah. Instagram or Twitter? Twitter, I get all my news from there. I get all my news from Twitter, although I, I think I enjoy Instagram more, but I, I probably spend more time on Twitter. No, for sure. So I guess I guess I have to say Twitter. Cake or pie? Cake. Pie. I've been craving cake hard lately, too. I've been craving pies. I don't, I I'm, just not, I'm a, not a pie guy. I just missed out on American Thanksgiving with my family back home, and they were having a bunch of pies. Yeah. But the team chaplain had us all over, and I did get to enjoy some pies for American Thanksgiving. But come... Christmas time, throw me a little apple crumble pie, something like that. Lights out. Yeah, can't really complain with some ice cream on top. Yeah. Um, uh, mint gum or bubble gum? <laughs> bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going mint gum. No, actually, like that's not my answer. Mint gum, 100. Yeah. I got a bunch of dentine in my car, or something like a five gum or something. Yeah, I'm going. It's mint. lights out. This bubble gum. Last me like three minutes. It's amazing while you're having it, but and after that, it out, it and there's, there's sugar too. Oh, there's a lot of sugar. You're putting sugar on your teeth, make sure. And you, you would know you got like, can I drop it like eleven cavities or something? Yeah, no, I had I had a lot of cavities. <laughs> one point. No, I wasn't eleven. I think like last time I went, I hadn't gone in like four years, and then I went, I had like six cavities or something. Yeah, there you go. They're all fixed up now. Now, like I got a beautiful uh, Oral B toothbrush and stuff, yeah. so I'm dialed. Good teeth too. Good gyps. So you ever yeah. you ever lose one or no? Yeah, I've lost uh, two, one and a half. And you got them replaced? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because a lot of people wait till after their careers. Yeah, I know. Just keep them going in and out. Yeah. Like pistons. Uh, we hear more about losing teeth, by the way, very soon with Justin Noble. But 
Um, or not losing teeth, but getting hit in the face during an OHL game. That's what we yeah. hear about. Yeah. Um, and a tooth. He lost it was a tooth. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay, so I was right. Anyway. Uh, we'll no. Spoil the interview. Yeah, I ruined, I ruined it. You, your turn to ask me. Hard shell or soft shell taco? Uh, soft shell. So what I do to be healthy again, I put, I make like a salad. So I put the ground beef and then I put all my toppings on. And then I crunch up a hard shell or a hard shell on top. And oh. then I eat and then whatever's left over, I throw it in a soft shell and I eat that as like my final thing. So it's pretty dialed That's in. That's kind of the best idea. It's ever. a bit of a show really by me. See, I like I don't I don't like the hard shell. Like crunching it up would be good, but eating it as a hard shell, it's so messy. Like it's yeah. impossible. And to it keep cuts it. your mouth sometimes. Yeah, so so. crunch it up, throw it on top, or sprinkle it and put it in your soft shell. Yeah, that's kind in. of a great answer. All right. That's why we do these. Uh friends or the office? The office for me. I'm a I like I, I'm not a huge fan of either. Like I don't know them religiously like yeah. some people do, but I do like Dwight Schrute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's not to love about Dwight? I've seen both up. I'm also not like huge, like I wouldn't rewatch it, but I'd pick uh, The Office. And that might piss people off because people like live and die by these shows. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'd go The Office. We might get a whole army of friends, people come to us. Yeah, we're um, All right. Was it me? Last you? but not least, yeah. soccer or baseball? I'm going baseball. baseball. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no <laughs> doubt. Like, okay. Not even a question. Glad we're on the same page. Sorry okay. to all the kids that will be coaching here soon. Yeah, for real. I wouldn't want to be on a team of us. <laughs> no, it'd be the most fun team. But anyway, let's send it over to Justin Noble now. We got a great interview with him. Super fascinating. So we'll send it over to Justin and uh, we'll get back to the Super fascinating. After. All right. We're joined now by Justin Noble, from the Gavin Wells specialist. So, Justin, you want to just tell us what you do and, and who you are and also. OHL linesman, by the way, by the way, reffing cards, these games, getting into scrums and stuff. So what, what's up, Justin? Yeah, no, I'll give you kind of my, uh, my, my background, my story. So I uh, originally from Georgetown and played some junior hockey there. Um, got a scholarship to play hockey in uh, upstate New York. So I spent four years there. Two-year captain, um, graduated with two degrees in finance and economics. And, and uh, I wanted to keep playing. I'm not a I didn't have NHL caliber caliber skills like like Cardi and some of these other guys, so uh, I went and played in, in Europe in a in a lower division. Uh, the first year, I was so pumped not to do schoolwork and and be like a be a full time hockey player and Netflix video games all yeah. that stuff. Uh, I had way too much time on my hand. We uh, we didn't practice during the day. We we practiced once in a while, games on weekends. So the second year, I enrolled and did my master's degree. Uh, international financial markets. So I came back to Toronto in uh, 2013. I had to write a thesis um, and I wrote it about the NHL, the collective bargaining agreement. I wrote it about an expansion plan. I kind of dug into everything to do with the NHL and it ended up doing really well. I got published in the library at the university kind of for two reasons. One, I was writing about something I was really passionate about. And two, in England, they had no idea what I was talking about. On the yeah. hockey side, right? <laughs> so they were like, oh, it sounds great. So I came back uh, again in 2013 and I've been working at Gavin Group ever since. So I started just bill pay, like making sure credit cards are paid, cell phones, um, really like basic, basic stuff. I've done certified financial planning designation and life license and all the things you need to do to be able to manage the affairs of uh, hockey players. So now I do contract forecasting and hey, if you earn this much and you save this much, this is what retirement looks like. And yeah, yeah so it's a uh, full picture. And, like Ross said, I, I drop pucks on the weekends in, in the OHL, which I find to be fun and entertaining. And uh, I said to one guy yesterday, he plays in the OHL, I said, I'm in your territory now. Like, if, if Cardi, you need to tell me where to go, like, I'm on the ice. This is your territory. Like, you got to make the NHL. I'm not going anywhere. So, like, I'm a big boy. I can take it. So, yeah. as long as we can shake hands afterwards and you don't hate me afterwards, I'm cool with it. No, yeah, you do a good job out there. You always uh, facilitate, especially in warm-ups. We always have a good chuckle, so that's good. But... I want to know, like, how did you get started at Gavin? Like, how did how did that opportunity arise for you? Uh, so I I uh, had a friend, and uh, his one of his colleagues or one of his friends from university was working at Gavin Group, and he's like, dude, this place is perfect for you. So I wrote Stu. Stu doesn't check his emails all the time, so he never got back to me. I, I wrote Matt, who was number two in the line, and I was just going to go through the list until they finally got back to me. It was something I was passionate about, and like to be able to combine my education and finance and and work with NHL athletes, it was like a dream. So yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was bound determined to do it, and I 
sent my thesis. I sent everything, and yeah, they gave me the opportunity. So it's been yeah, great. Cool. So we can't say who the clients are on here, but we know there's a lot of high profile NHL clients and stuff, and and the three of us like we know some big names. But um, you talked about earlier in your job paying credit cards and stuff like that. Is there any stories of like you can talk about of just like what crazy things NHL players are spending their money on, or like a crazy month you've seen of spending anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, like the first three, four months of working there was extremely eye opening. Like, I remember we got, we went into one meeting and we said, you know, like, hey, so and so, like, what do you think you spend this month? And he's like, oh, I like, you know, I had a busy month downtown, and you know, like, I took my buddies out, so maybe, maybe like five, six thousand bucks. Um, and then you go through like their cash flow and they got to pay their agent. Like, you know, training's not cheap. Skating in the summer is not cheap. Um, you probably have a nice car. You got to pay rent. Like all of a sudden these things add up. So like my lifestyle might be like, yeah, that five to $6,000 a month, but an NHL guy could be 12, 15, 25, 30 grand a month, which is out outrageous money, but it costs a lot of money just to be a, like an athlete. Yeah. For sure. And like a lot of people don't understand like how much training is like, a lot of guys go to Gary Roberts in the summer. It's like 20 grand alone yeah. for that, stuff like that. So, oh, but and you get your food. Yeah, you get your food. Well, <laughs> but hey, listen, I'll say this. He does an amazing job. A lot of our guys train with him. And we're huge proponents of investing in yourself. Like if yeah. you want to put $20,000 towards your training, be committed to it. Be there every day. Be there with a smile on. Work hard. And you're going to get a lot out of it. And it will pay dividends when you're in the National Hockey League. Yeah, that's what a lot of people like don't understand too. Like it is expensive, but like if you're gonna make it, it all like kind of works out in the end. And that's like something even guys to get to the OHL, like a lot of like our listeners are young and stuff like that. So they don't they don't maybe necessarily understand that maybe packing a meal rather than going to McDonald's before totally. a game or something like that, it makes like a huge difference. But yeah. I got a few questions in terms of like the refing and stuff, like because you must have seen some crazy stuff. Like how many years have you you've been in the league now? Uh, so my refing career, like when I finished playing hockey. I wanted to be involved in hockey. I wanted to give back to hockey. It was like, this game has given me, you know, travel the world, education, friends for life. Like it's, I just wanted to be involved and stay involved outside of my career. Um, so I coached, I hated that. And then uh, I was like, well, maybe I'll ref. And I just wanted to be a GTHL ref and pick up bucks for young guys. And it kind of just like manifested into what it is today. I, the GTHL pushed me onto the OHA and the OHA is like the OHL wants you. And, then I went to the NHL, NHL camp and that was awesome. But um, yeah, I haven't been doing it too many years. I think I'm on like six. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. It's uh, it, a lot of guys don't know, but it's extremely competitive on the referee side because guys want to go to the Mem Cup. Guys yeah. want to do the World Juniors. Guys want to work in the National Hockey League. And you're competing against four guys on the ice every day. So, yeah. you know, you're a team, but like no different than you. Like your teammate may be drafted by the same team and you want that spot. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cool. I never thought about it that I, way. I never thought about that either. So what, what about like scrums? You ever get like a stick in the face? You're like, do any get in and hear some, some crazy shit, like anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You hear some crazy things and the world we live in today, you know, guys have to be careful what they're saying, yeah. right? Like uh, most of your guys' games are on TV and you can read lips and you can see what guys are saying. So you got to be careful and, it's kind of like, hey, I give you a tap on the the back and be like, hey, you gotta clean your life language up, you know. Like, yeah, I'm a big boy, I can hear it, but you know, you don't want to be suspended for that. It's a bad luck. Yeah, it's the same thing. You always come up to me in warm up, say, make sure you got that neck guard pulled. <laughs> uh, I was, I pulled some pictures of you. I don't think you had neck guard on once. Nah, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure it when I can. But I get uh, it. Hey, you look cooler. Right so yeah, I'm, the the mouth guard thing too. Like quickly, do you like do you want to touch on that? Like it's becoming very big and i think there was like 240 minutes in penalties in the ohl yeah and that alone yeah like I, i'm not speaking at a school these we get memos every week with like points of emphasis and it goes around to the, the owners and the gms and say hey this is like it's come up in manager meetings at the beginning of the week and we want to crack down on it so at the end of the day it's like, we have to do it because that's what the league wants yeah. now do i want to be coming to you in a one-one hockey game in the third and be, be giving you a mouth guard penalty no it's like nightmares so you don't want that yeah. but Again, it's what what comes from the top. So, you just yeah. uh, sometimes you're a bad guy. And that's what that's the yeah, no, I think the refs leave the games a lot of times as the bad guy rather than the good guy. Yeah, the only thing that can get you in more trouble if you don't call it. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, yeah. yeah, and like so, when you guys like obviously you like like anything, you guys got your like higher ups in the refing and stuff like that. So when they come to the games, is it like you guys get like amped up for those games? You're like, okay, <laughs> I can't make a mistake today. <laughs> 
there's some guys definitely that um, have been around the league long enough that will get, you know, they'll talk to the, uh, the referee in chief and be like, hey, how did, uh, how did Nobs do tonight? Yeah. And uh, they've been around long enough. They know if you're doing a good job or a bad job. So every single game is on tape and the league's watching. And uh, so, I mean, every game you're pumped up, you want to do the best for the, for the game and for the sport and for the players and coaching staff, the fans. Um, but yeah, if there's a, if there's a, a super bet on the game, yeah, yeah. If you think a little bit extra and uh, make sure you, that he's pleased with what you've done on the ice. Well, yeah, sure. yeah. But there's a lot of stuff we never think about. But I mean, we got a we have a presentation to do for the Barry Colts in a minute. But before we, I I'll actually, I, up, I got one yeah. more question. So I got yeah. one. I'll let you go first. Okay. Yeah. How many spills have you had in your career <laughs> on the ice? Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh yeah, I've had some. I've had some good ones. Like I had one at the preseason Hamilton ex like exhibition game, and I'm just coming up the ice and. Like you guys skate every day in the summer, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I golf, right? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. So I'm like wheeling up the ice, and I'm like, I feel pretty good today. And then I just like catch an edge, and I fall, and I slide right into the neutral zone. Like, Ooh. not good. But the one that uh, made me question whether I wanted to do this anymore, I'm I was the first game of the entire season this year, and I drop a puck, end zone face off after a penalty. Yeah, and there's a guy trying out in Guelph. He gets the puck, and he's nervous, like full cage. He's ready to like shit himself he's killed right? <laughs> no, you're good you're good <laughs> he, so he gets the puck and he just rips it turns and rips it and i turn boom right in the face so i had like 30 stitches i oh, lost a tooth no. like, i got home my wife's like really like we got a another yeah. child coming and you're coming home with this so uh yeah that stuff happens but Will as you get better for your tooth or what yeah okay, yeah, they, they, they're Thank pretty you. good about that yeah. so yeah they were actually amazing with that they followed up lots and the Mississauga guys stitched me up and uh yeah, it was class A service. So. Back in business, just like a player would be. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The refs are gritty too. Yeah. Everyone's got to know it. one. Yeah. yeah. I guess one more to wrap it up. Uh who what coach in the league is giving it to the refs the hardest? I, I Marty's pretty bad with my experience with him, but is there a coach that that you're always like, oh, this guy's like always giving me the gear? Um I'm gonna totally watch what I say here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say this. Ball. I'll say this about the the coaches in the OHL, and this is coming from someone who's worked up, you know, through the minor hockey ranks to the OHA to the OHL. GTHL, they'll yell at you because they think that's what a coach has to do. Yeah. In the OHA, it's a little bit. You've got kind of mixed bag. In the OHL, they're focused on their team. They want their. They have a power play. They have a penalty kill. Um, the, the, they're they're working on you know the position of their players. Yeah. And if you make a mistake, they'll let you know. And nine times out of ten, if they're yelling at you, they've probably got a pretty good point. Um, but yeah, one guy in particular, I don't know, probably a good avoid answer. that answer. Probably a good answer. All righty, well, Justin, thanks for doing this. It's and, awesome. Uh, we appreciate having you on. And also, just shout out to the Gavin group because we appreciate everything that Gavin's done for us in our podcast. Absolutely. And uh, so yeah, shout out Gavin. Thanks, Justin, and uh, we'll catch you guys later. All right, I want to thank. Justin Noble and the Gavin guys for that. We love Gavin. You all love Gavin. Who doesn't love Gavin? And uh, we can take it to some fan questions before we wrap it up here. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll read them off. What's your favorite thing about doing the podcast? Cards? Just kind of messing around talking and getting like people like actually enjoy hearing what we have to say, believe it or not. Um, so that's actually not a bad thing. Um, and I just like to just be able to talk about hockey. Like obviously – I love hockey, but to come on here, we talk about hockey. We talk about just like anything in life, really. Um, it's something to do, and it's it's really fun. You? Yeah, I mean, you definitely hit all the points. It's uh, it's just kind of fun to like just shoot the shit. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and for me too, like you're playing with these guys and against them and stuff. But I I'm in no position to be like without you really like talking to these NHL guys really like in the way we, we, we do. So like to get that opportunity for me is always nice. Like I get to meet someone new every week and someone who I might not have the opportunity to like ever talk to without yeah. this. So, so that's definitely, I'd, I'd probably say that's my favorite thing. Like yeah, that stuff and meeting all the new people um, who would win in an arm wrestling match. I like, there's only one way to settle it. I think, right. We can't rip a live arm wrestle. Are we? I think we should. All right, let's do it. A full tilt arm wrestling match. I haven't arm wrestled in like a while. Let's get rid of the mic. Tune here. in the YouTube. Uh, yeah, right this, now. Is, this is a big moment in uh, showbound history. All right. Cardi's like flexing his triceps right now.
All right. Dialed in. I got the oversized T on, so you don't know what you're about to get into here. Okay. On go? Yeah. One, two, three, go. Oh, uh, you like butter. Like butter. This guy's guy Raskin working out every day. Raskin defeated. All right. Okay, so we have our answer. Um where are we? go to the gym, buddy. Yeah, I gotta get back. But uh <laughs> I've been too busy in Greece. Yeah, that's, that's, true. Italy. that's true. That's true. I've been having a good time. Yeah, you've been too busy. <laughs> too, too many beers. I've been having protein shakes instead. Yeah. Well, look where you're going. Look where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Okay, player in the NHL who's surprised us and one who's disappointed. You so, go first. So I, I noted down Shane Pinto on Ottawa has surprised me because I didn't really know who he was, and this guy is so nasty. Oh, he's a great player. So he's the one who surprised me. And uh, I put down here Shane Wright has disappointed, but it's not his fault, but like with the expectation of all year him going number one and all that. Now, again, he hasn't had the opportunity. We've talked about this a million times, but – Anyone else has has anyone else like disappointed me? Maybe just like all the injuries on the Leafs have you know disappointed me, but no one I think in spe- specifically has uh has disappointed me. What do you got? Surprised Carlson. Yep. Pretty easy answer there. I think he surprised a lot of people with the resurgence of his career here, kind of, and getting back to the player that he, he always has been. So that's pretty awesome to see. And well, you know what? I'm kind of not surprised because I did see him dance me at camp a few times and stuff like that. So surprised, but not. And disappointed, I'm not too sure. Like, I, I haven't really um, gone into that much depth, but maybe like a Huberto or something like that. I don't think he's 100% played up to his expectations. Obviously, it's tough after a trade and everything like that. Um, but I'm sure it'll take no time for him to figure it out. Yeah. Definitely change of scenery can be can go both ways, but he'll he'll definitely figure it out. Uh, someone says thoughts on Cardi's hat trick against the Ice Dogs. So, um, I'm the type of person like when I'm when I'm watching the game, I uh, I'm pretty calm like in a regular season game. Like I'm not really doing anything, and especially I'm watching from the press box. Yeah, there, and I I like fist bump and scream when you got the so <laughs> I did like two goals in like what 18 or 20 seconds or something yeah it was um, so fast so the first one I'm like dancing around the press box and then <laughs> and then he scores right after I, I wasn't even looking I just saw right after there was a goal and yeah. then the media guy in Niagara was like oh it was Cardi again <laughs> and I was like no way and like me and Sam are like high-fiving yeah. and like, so I'm like and you're supposed to be professional though no. yeah oh yeah but that's my thoughts I was getting fired up I was getting absolutely fired up and uh it was, uh, of course, um, I'm cheering for Cardi all the time. So it was, it was definitely exciting to, to see that in person. And uh, that's, that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts on your hat trick against the Ice Dogs? It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, disappointed we lost, obviously, yeah. but it's always cool to get a hat trick. Like it's, it's one of those like milestones i guess you could call it or something it like it doesn't happen too often so when it does you got to be grateful for it and just kind of enjoy the moment so that's yeah. where i was at and you know just every shift try to score a goal and see what happens yeah and then i it was uh it was four three ice dogs at the end of the second period and you had the all three goals and i tweeted i saw that i told the ice dogs got to tweet it from his from the ice dogs but he didn't want it. <laughs> but i i quote tweeted the ice dogs like score graphic and i said like after yeah, actually, minutes. just a disclaimer, I have no part in the social media, <laughs> so I don't want anyone thinking I'm posting that about actually, myself. Cardi tweeted this in from the dressing room in the middle of the game. <laughs> um, no, but I, I had tweeted, I'll, I'll, yeah, so I tweeted, like, after 40 minutes, it's Niagara 4, Cardi 3, and I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think it was clever. Like, clever. Um, have you ever thought about quitting hockey? Well, I know you already did quit hockey, yeah. so... Yes, you have, but I have. me <laughs> personally, actually like not quit hockey, but like maybe not take it less serious. When I was like 14, I, I was like a avid golfer still am as everyone knows, but I was very like much considering going to school for golf and pursuing that as my dream. So I actually did think about like maybe toning it down or maybe just like not going all in on the hockey scene, but uh, I just couldn't my love for the game it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. You are <laughs> you are a good golfer and uh obviously your younger brother an even better golfer. Eh. You've been taking he, it to he, you lately, he's right? He's a good player, but I can still take him in a one on one. I get in his head. 
Yeah. Um, Just like I get in your head. <laughs> last one. Last fan question here. What's a hockey moment that made you cry? Do you, you have one? Uh, I well, know. I know you do. So yeah. I'll let you go first. So I put, uh, if you, you might remember when Brian Boyle scored, uh, I think it was for the New Jersey Devils after his battle with cancer yeah. and he was gone for a while. And I was like, I think the clip went pretty viral and everyone was all, cause he played with the Leafs too. And yeah, obviously yeah. I liked him when he was on the Leafs and you, you got to root for a guy like that. So yeah. and now I don't know if it made me cry, Yeah, I just remember, but I, yeah, it was emotional yeah. for sure. I yeah. think, I think for me, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is um, the passing of Dale you know, yeah. like I didn't know Dale too well here in Barry. And I was here I'd for only, that too. Yeah, I'd only like met him a few times and everything like that. I know you knew him probably better than I did, even. But um, pretty emotional to see a just a guy of his stature in the hockey world and just like such a good person pass. Um, and then secondly, what comes to mind is uh, his little Ben Stelter, I believe his name was. Yeah. The uh, Stelter. Yeah something along those lines, but a super fan of uh, McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers to see his battle. That was always emotional to see and uh, always thinking about him. Yeah. Very well said. Now, uh, I guess this is, this has been great. It's been a, a pleasure to no, it's been record a in person and uh, a long time coming. We're at 89 episodes, man. Yeah. 89. Like, so holy... we're going for 90. And then that means in 10 weeks, so 10 weeks, if we know how to do math, that's two and a half months. If we stay strong and stay steady on the episodes, we may take a break over Christmas. We'll see what our schedules are saying and everything yeah. like that. But that means I need to find a trophy shop and I need to get a plaque made up for the boys for 100 episodes. So if anybody has any suggestions, <laughs> hit us up in the DMs. If anyone wants to sponsor this. <laughs> yeah, if anybody uh, wants to sponsor us and make us 100 uh trophy box then uh, just let me know and that'll make my life a lot easier but if not uh, I'll do that with my Christmas shopping with that being said Channel 4 News Team signing over and out let's go